from the Thai Cats Audio Network. This is Morialli and Hitch. All right, Robbie. What uh, this is uh, like event uh, podcast number seven or eight? Which one is it now? I think eight. Eight. I think. Wow. Eight. Well, welcome to the uh, episode number eight of the Morielli and Hitch podcast right here on the Thai Cats Audio Network. And, and Rob, we, uh, we had a nice meeting yesterday with uh, our, our friend Dave Cadeau, who is kind of our boss uh, when it comes to podcasts, that's for sure. <laughs> we had this great meeting about everything we we're going to do, all the planning we we're going to do, the sharing of information and nothing, I received nothing from you. Nothing, 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 nothing. So not one thing happened. So Dave, did I, re- did I did I get anything back from you? No. <laughs> you told me you were sending to me. I should have known right off the bat not Listen. to expect anything. Hundred percent. Listen, you're not my boss, so you should send stuff to me as well. <laughs> Um, well, go, we, go. listen, listen, we did talk about, we we're going to have, uh, Andrew Gregg on the show today, but, uh, he is on his way into Brantford right now. Uh, he making a few donuts. Tim Hortons. He's making donuts and coffee. And I don't think he wanted to come on and tell you the truth on the, um, with the audio. I think, really? he, I think he just wanted the what, phone. He just wanted no. video. He didn't what want the video. Sorry. He didn't no, want the video. I think he just wanted the audio. And uh, I was like, what do you mean? He's like, no, no, I, oh, come on. I just, I, I'm just going to be driving. I said, well, we can't have you on then. So I tell okay, no problem. He said, I said, well, when are we going to get you back? And he's like, oh, maybe next week. I'll figure it out if I can get 20 minutes of my time. I said, oh, you're tired. Oh, eh? oh you're tired. 20 minutes. He, he, he does want to come on though. So we do have to get I on. know. And we want to have him on. Obviously, I was thinking about that. You know, we talked about guests. We had Whitey on the only guest so far. Gregor would be an awesome guest. We know lots of people. How about yeah. we flex our muscles a little bit here and we try to bring on some like big time Hamilton legends. Doesn't have to be sports. Could be entertainment. Let's get Martin short on the show. Let's get somebody on the show. Hamilton boy. Yeah. yeah. Let's get some big time players on this show. We need, okay. we need a little help. You know, we, the people on the back end here making some phone calls, speaking of on the back end, hmm. this is uh, this is a special day. Because we're going to have, uh, you know, moving forward, I think we're going to try to integrate our little friend, David, who yes. we're going to name executive producer of the show, N- not qualified, but it doesn't matter. He's going to be part of this show moving. You're never going to see this guy. He's going to be in the wings, even though you and I can see him right now. So maybe yeah. it's not working out so well. <laughs> I but, see him. Uh, we're we're, we're going to bring David on when we just need, we need something. We need a fix. We need an answer. You know, maybe we are having some problems. We want him to call somebody. So, David, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, there he is. Look at that, just <laughs> unbelievable. Just cut, that his voice cutting through like a knife, what like a, a knife through butter. What a producer! <laughs> what a producer! Put that on your resume, David. This hey, is David, a good start for David, you. David, how do we get the mic that you have that's hanging down over your uh, forehead there? Uh, you do, have to be special. That? You have to be special. Okay. Well, then why do you have one? <laughs> <laughs> This is how it's going to be. David's one of us now. Good yeah. luck. Thanks, pal. Well, uh, you can stay on if you want or beat it. <laughs> <laughs> Two words. Oh, beat I love it. it. Oh, so do we introduce David? We talked about what we want to do. Now let's get into to our show, which is no different than how we started the show, which is just yeah. let's just get going. Well, we, we do have a bit of structure, Beatsy. We do. And we'd always talk about the standings and the crossover every week. <laughs> Cause that seems to be a good theme. So we're going to keep with that theme. We're going to stay nice. with it. Way, way to branch out. You know what? You have to, you have to. So what I'm looking at now is the East and is it, it's getting interesting. Okay. I've got a couple things written here. Toronto seven and four, Hamilton six and five, uh, Montreal six and five. The, and Toronto's already clinched the playoff spot. If you can believe crazy, it. Crazy. Eh? And you know who Isn't they have crazy? left? Do you know who they have left? No. They have Ottawa, Montreal, or sorry, Ottawa, Edmonton were bottom of the barrel, and Hamilton. Really? Yep. So, and then Hamilton has Saskatchewan, Toronto, and BC. So, not looking, not looking too far ahead, but you know what? You're right now. I know Simone and the and the veteran guys and, and coaches are too, but they would never say anything. That first place, <laughs> that's huge. Huge. That's huge to get that by is huge. 
And there's and let's not forget on a shortened season too, right? You're playing multiple games, shortened weeks. You really yeah. need that buy even more so than, than other, and you're playing deeper into the winter. You definitely need that buy. And then out West Winnipeg, of course, 10 and one, same as they were, they had a buy Saskatchewan seven and four and Calgary six and six. So the crossover, I don't think it's going to happen because BC's four and seven. They got to they yeah. got to win out, and Hamilton just has Hamilton and Montreal just has to win one, I think, and that's it. So I, I don't I don't think that's going to happen. So we don't have to talk about the crossover anymore. Um, but yeah, no, it's a little boring. But it is it it is interesting, and it's going to come down like this week. Uh, they got BC. Hamilton has BC this week, and yeah, I don't know. It's uh, BC's gunning. They they got to win three games to try to get that crossover. So, or, or catch, sorry, or catch Calgary because Calgary six and six are two games back. But anyways, enough of that. Um, Listen, that's good math by you. So speaking of math, how's this securities test going? Pretty good. <laughs> are you getting used to it now? Yeah, I'm getting used to it. <laughs> I do have to write again. Um, oh, I haven't boy. booked it. I'm, I'm going to probably write it on the 15th or 16th of November. Whatever we do, you can't you can't write it like the day of one of these podcasts or the day after. Because last time no. you're so salty. What's wrong with my face right now? The stupid sun's coming in. Can't I see know. it. I gotta figure something out. I gotta get my wife to buy a blind. When are we get in our own studio? I know this is bad. When are we get in our own studio? I gotta guess this is really this is ridiculous. Can't even, can't even see me. Stupid hair. Is this budget mind. cuts? Yeah. Hey, let's uh let's stay on the track with Hamilton here. Um, I just found out yesterday. Simone Lawrence is eight tackles away from my all-time tackle lead. Eight. But you're going down. Well, hey. But that's okay. These these things are made to be broken. Records are made to be broken. Exactly. Yes. Um, You know what? I looked. I was starting to think about it because I'm like, he's only eight away. He's going to catch him this week. And I'll be behind the bench this week. I'm doing the uh, I'm doing the halftime. uh, Or not the halftime. I'm doing the radio stuff in between uh, in between the quarters. So if he gets eight. That'll be a lot of fun because they'll probably announce it and I'll be on the field as well. So I'm sure he'll come Absolutely. over to me. <laughs> That'll be kind of fun. So I'm, I'm, I hope he does it. Um, but, you know, I, I was thinking about him as a player and how our old school coaches like Don Southern and Herbert Bowman and all those old guys, how, how would they would have loved a player like that when we played? Cause he's oh, kind yeah. of got that. He's got that old school, um, not mentality, but he's, he's, He's on the edge, but he gets the job done, right? And he's a leader, and he would have been fun to play with back in the day. Oh, he fits in perfect, though, in Hamilton, eh? But he would have fit in nice with with our crew, and he would have had lots of fun and drank lots of beers and probably had more tackles. Does he drink? I don't know, but let's just – let's just if he played for us, there would be no choice at that particular point in time. Yeah. Well, people always say to me, too, well, geez, you had a lot – you're leading the – the organization, the history of tackles. Yeah. Well, I was a safety, so that wasn't a good thing, right? When your safety's making, you're making uh, 15 yards yeah, deep. That's not, a, yeah. that's not a good thing. It's probably not a good thing, but I tell you the years that we had the stud defenses in 98, 99, 2000, I was making like 30 tackles, 35 tackles a year. That was it. I couldn't, I was playing like a middle linebacker sometimes because I'd cheat up yeah. on the line of scrimmage because I wanted to make tackles, but I wasn't even in the play half the time. Hey, speaking of records, it's funny you say that because last year, well, 2019, Luke Tasker um, jumped in front of me, I think, in all-time receptions on the list. Uh, at one point, I was at number five. I'm so pissed, eh? Because I look at where I'm at, where I was at when I retired. I was like 30 catches away from being third all-time behind Rocky and, uh, of course, Earl. That's a good company. And, you know, just going out like that in 20, you know, never, never mind that, in 2007 getting released is bad. But having those years where, you know, depending on the system you're in, you're like the fourth or fifth option, that's yeah. garbage. So I look yeah. back and go, are you kidding me? 30 catches away from being behind two of the greatest players ever to play in the CF, CFL? Yeah. So regardless, they're, like we say, where they're, they're made to be broken. But Luke caught up to me two years ago, and now some, uh, now Simone, not Simone. I know he makes catches, but not, not that many. Uh, <laughs> Brandon Banks now is cre- creeped up. So I think he's oh. in fifth. Luke's in, Luke's in sixth. I'm in seventh. Um, and then there's Darren just ahead. Or he's Rickers somewhere in there. there. And then, then Archie. Gregor's up there too, right? Gregor's up there for 
Yards. Except, I think, oh, I think, you are, I can't remember. I think it's yards. Yeah, we'll ask Greg, him. Greg comes on next year. Oh, he'll tell us. He's yeah, going to tell us. Never he mind. If he was okay. on this right now, we'd be having a battle. I'm, but, ninth, uh, I'm ninth in catches and <laughs> six in yards. And da, da, da. I said, oh, yeah. Okay. Be that. Truth is, Andrew was, was a hell of a, a football player. He was a hell of an athlete. Yeah. And, you know, he'd made the most out of every opportunity, right? And he had to finish his career a little bit early because you know now he's uh, making the, the big coin as uh, hawking uh, donuts and coffees so you know in the end everything works out but you know as you're a competitive uh, person you know we are always battling to to you know do the best we can all that stuff anyways heck of a guy these these uh stats are always made to be broken you got to win though man at the end of the day you got to win right so you know because when you look back, I don't care how many tackles you have or how many, but we won together. And that was, that was the thing that's the most important. So let's see what happens. I want all those things to be broken. That means that the Ticats are going on to win games and win great cups, by all means, break all the records. Who cares? It's yeah. uh, records are, are for that reason to be broken, but you hit the nail on the head. Every player couldn't give a shit about all the, their accolades. Yeah. It's all great. But if you don't win a championship, no, oh. they they don't. They they would give they give every tackle, every interception, every reception just for an air championship. No, I mean, Steagle's a perfect example. Yeah. That guy yeah. is a machine, a stud, yeah. Hall of Famer, yeah. and you don't think he wanted to lift that trophy one of those years? Yeah. Anyways, we'll we'll move on from that. But you know, we just finished Halloween. How many kids at your spot? Okay, well, we're used to two hundred to two hundred and fifty. Uh, we got about eighty five. Really? That's you know how many more people you got than me? 85. <laughs> Nobody. Get out of here. Well, you're old street. You have an old street. Now, I live on a street that's a little bit like no sidewalks, a little bit bigger yards so that the kid's not efficient, right? If you're a kid, you're not r- ripping off, you know, candy after candy. So they're like, they look down the street, they're like, nah, not going to work. Takes uh, too much time. Do you know what we used to do when we were uh, kids? You know, I lived on Owen Place, right? Oh, yeah. Right, right by the old Newman. Do you remember that white apartment building across from Eastgate Square? Yep. We used to tear down there first. There was like 16 floors, and we used to hit every floor. And we come out of there with not it's a gold uh, rush. It, it, unbelievable. And it was if it was cold, we just go to the apartment building, just go into the apartment buildings. We used to do that. Hey, what remember, was your favorite treat? At Halloween, what's your favorite candy or chocolate or whatever? Let's do both, favorite and worst. Okay. The, the, the favorite was uh for sure the just like a Kit Kat. I like Kit Kats. Yeah, I like Kit Kats too. Oh, my mom's oh, calling. Oh boy, here we go. Okay, Who's calling? It's my mom. It's my mom. Put mama. I'll give her Put mama. <laughs> um, and okay, and I'll get yours. Kit Kit Kat, yeah. I like nice Kit Kat. The worst is when someone give you an apple. Oh, you know what we used to do with it? You know what we used to do? We used to actually throw the apple back at the house. So <laughs> on, on, on the roof. We used to hit the roof. Not a garage or a window. There you go. Out, bust it on the roof, and they'd have apple all on their shingles. Take your apple, shove it up your ass. Yeah. And back when we were kids, it was they were putting those little uh, uh, razor blades. Razor blades. Remember a couple of them were in there in Hamilton? Idiots. Yeah, that's why they got thrown back. You know what? My, my fa- I, I am a Kit Kat guy, too. Yeah, I like Kit Kat. Not too chocolatey. Got the wafers. Nice and crispy, and that and score. I like score. But you can't, you won't get a lot of score here. Score gets in your teeth, though. Not that. Yeah, that's kind of fun. You can taste it all day. The worst, the candy corn garbage. Oh, yeah. oh, terrible. No, who eats that? Not me. Candy corn. <laughs> candy corn, so stupid. Hey, listen, I got to hey. tell you about last yeah. week. Last week, first before you get into some. Last week, my son place for uh minor midget hockey double a so it's good hockey it's right below triple a it's not good enough to play triple a uh anyways we go we head down to flamborough last whatever last thursday and it's an exhibition game against these guys there's some big kids buddy there's some big kids oh gosh. 15 years old they're turning 16 in in um in january for this. so so next year so it's under They'll be 16 anyway. My kid doesn't turn 16 until next September, but so he's kind of eight months behind those kids that are turning it in January. Anyways, so there's some big kids. We're up four nothing. They make they're doing a flood. They come out four one, four two, four three. There's like 30 seconds left in the game, and one of our guys just crushes 
perfectly clean hit, hits this guy in the chest. The guy goes down. One guy, two hands him. It's a full line brawl. Line no. brawl. Never seen it in like because there's kids, like 15 year old kids. 50 year old kids. Got it on video of it. Of course full, you did. Stop, full, stop to take the video as people are getting I fed. didn't. I did, but <laughs> my kid wasn't on. But a good buddy of mine, this is funny because a good buddy of mine, uh, Davey Testa, his his boy was on, and he's, he's my my son's best friend. He's out there. They're they're keeping their gloves on, right? No helmets off, but they're punching each other. And then one of our kids kind of takes off and goes to the bench, kind of what the hell is going on. And then that kid grabs our guy, and there are two, there are two oh. guys pounding him, right? So our my, my one buddy, Matty Testa, he, he rights hook this kid. It was going on for 30 seconds. Wait, your one buddy, is this a, a, a grown-up hooks the kid? Or this is... No, oh. Matty Testa's his kid. He's kid. Okay. He smashes this kid. Long story short, the everyone gets five games suspension. Five games. Oh. Okay. So, and my my friend's kid, Matt, he's the guy that gave the good right hook. He got two games. No. Come on. And, and you saw it in the video. Because like he landed boom. it clean. Eh? Landed There's it a clean. little respect. There was it, was, respect it was unbelievable. There. So everyone got five games. Everyone's appealing it now because we got to go into Halton Hills tonight. Get this. Nine o'clock game on a Tuesday night in Halton Hills, which is an hour and 10 minute drive from here. We're going to be home at midnight and we have five guys down because we're going to go play one of the top teams tonight. But anyways, kind of funny, but never seen that because our kids were, they're always so small. Yeah. All of a sudden, bam, where was your boy? Was what, on, what, what, on the what bench. Matthew doing? He's on the bench. Nice, eh? Yeah, he couldn't go. I said, what have you done? You're out there. Oh, yeah, I would have fought him. I said, yeah, sure you would. <laughs> you would have fought him. Oh, what a beauty. Hey, listen, all these, yeah, the kids these days are, are so big and so strong. They grew up so fast. When we, when we were kids, I don't remember any of that. I don't remember, you know, I remember the guys, like there's a handful of guys I went to grade school with in grade seven had like full on beards. Yep. They had full beards, but if you see them today, they're exact same size. They didn't grow a yeah. stitch beyond grade yeah. seven. Yeah. Right now they're five foot three, but at five foot three, grade seven, you were the man. Oh yeah. Now, you and I were five three in grade ten. Oh, grade ten. I was. I was five foot three, in grade ten. Nobody. <laughs> I didn't grow till late too. Yeah. I didn't grow till late. Well, hey, it's not how you start; it's how you finish. But when right. we, when we were kids, I was thinking about the games we used to play. I don't know about you. I had a park right behind me, Cherry Heights Park, behind where I grew yeah. up. So we were out all the time. But our favorite games to play wiffle ball. Love the wiffle ball. Yeah. And then did you ever go and we played Nerf football, we played Nicky Nicky Nine Door and all these stupid games. And because on my street it was a uh, you know a, a dead end. So there's no not a lot of uh yeah. cars come down. So we were doing everything. We were, you know, being idiots, but we we're always out. But one of the games we played, I don't know if you played this game, fumble. You ever play the game fumble? No. It's just a stupid game. You put a ball in the middle, like a football in the middle of a circle, and all your buddies line up you know in a big circle around you and then somebody yells fumble and you all run in and try to get the ball and you all you all attack each other the stupidest game how many times you crack your head with each other oh every time yeah every time every single time somebody knee to the face somebody loses a tooth uh you know kick to the nuts it was uh yeah i just didn't know if it was our group that that made up this stupid game or this was a real game apparently it was just a stupid game yeah, we, we didn't do any of that. But I lived right at Sir Isaac Brock and St. David's, right? Right up the street. So we had that park. We used to play that uh, baseball, but we, on the school wall. Oh, the we'd, tape. We'd, we'd tape it up and that would be our strike zone. And then ledgies. Remember ledgies? You ever play oh, ledgies? Yeah. With the, yep. the crap little thing used to hit it and then the ledgy ball would go down. Oh. Speaking of ledgies, did you ever do the leaners with the with the OPG hockey cards? You used to line them up on oh, the wall. Yeah. You take the other card, yeah. oh, you yeah. throw it, you yeah. whatever it fell down, you get to keep. <laughs> the you middle did we realize every time we whipped it against the wall, we're bending the cards, breaking the cards. We didn't give a shit. We didn't know they'd be worth anything. Well, we're using Wayne Gretzky rookie cards. <laughs> <laughs> Or else you put them on the spoke to your bike. You oh, put yeah. like the uh, the clothes hanger. You put the, yeah. the cards in as you drove back. About what, what, ten of them on there. It sounded we, when you oh. had a whole bunch of boys doing it. it used to go up. It sounded like a bunch of Harleys going up the street. Oh yeah, we sounded cool, man. Oh yeah. Hey, when you lived, remember you were telling me that story about your buddy Pete. I can't remember where you lived at the time. But it was up in Bimbrook area where his dad gave him that beating that one day when he came home. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> what did you see out your window that day? What do you mean? 
Would he, because remember uh, your buddy Pete, he was doing something on the street. His dad was not happy with him. So yeah, his I dad went from when work. He, when he got the new bike. Yes, yes. Yeah, I think, did I not tell this? I don't know. No. Oh my God, this is the best. So my buddy Pete Petinelli lived, and I lived in the whole Italian neighborhood. And uh, his dad worked big construction uh, for Dufferin, fingers on him like sausages, right? Just a big Italian guy. And Pete got a brand new bike. So he lived directly across the street from me. So he used to ride his bike back and forth, back and forth. I'd stand on the sidewalk because I had this old piece of crap that my brothers both used. And it was a flat tire. It was rusty. I, I was mad. He gets this brand new yellow bike and he's flying up and down, looking at me like this, looking at me, hey, driving by. And Mr. Petinelli comes, comes home in his long Dufferin truck, big concrete truck. And he's in his truck and Pete's driving, riding his bike like this and Pietro opens his door and Pete hits the door with his brand new bike. It hits the door, the door elastic band back. Oops. He flies back. His bike is bent. His dad gets out and gives him a boom, gives him a beat. He's already on the ground, gives him another slap, grabs the bike, throws it in the back of his truck. Pete can't even walk. And Pietro's boat, if he had a slipper, he would have taken it off and beat him with it. He was so bad. He didn't care that he got hurt on the that he hit the door. Oh, he had an insult to injury. Oh, he had the ins- he gave him a beating. Pete hobbled in the house. I didn't see him for two days. I didn't see him for two days. He, no no, more, new, no more new bike. No more new no bike. No more new bike. Oh. He hit the concrete truck. He hit the he, never mind. He fell down. He embarrassed him. You're done. Mm-hmm. But Pete, so my cousin Jason and I, for some stupid reason, when we turned like 19, whatever it was. There was this thing going around town. It was the charity casinos. It was like five bucks a hand and you go and play. The rules weren't even like legit rules, but you know, we thought, oh man, we're going to go to the charity casino. We lost everything. Every time we went, you bring yeah. 75 bucks, you lose 75 yeah. bucks. But Pete was always there. So it was me, Jason and Pete. <laughs> and every time cards out to this day, you know, it, busting, busting. Every time the dealer be dealing, busting, <laughs> He's busting. Yelling. But to this day, that's how we recognize Pete. Pete yeah. is busting, busting. Oh, what was I thinking? That was terrible. Lost lots of the lunch money. Lost a lot, a lot of lunch money those days. How old were you guys? I'm going to say 19 or 20. Oh, okay. Well, they don't have them anymore. No. They don't have them anymore. They were like the upstairs of a legion, right? You go in there and everybody's uh, smoking butts oh, everywhere. Butts. The, de- the dealer's smoking. The dealer's got the butt in as they're dealing cards. It was awful. But that's what it was. And now, you know, you got to go to Niagara, do whatever. But uh, but back in those days, man. Hey, speaking of games, did you ever have a a big wheel? Loved it. Buddy, was there a better thing than the big wheel? Spinning. Spinning. Yeah. But then there was the guys that, you know, I didn't like these guys because the big wheel was the thing. But then there was the upgraded green machine. Do you know anybody had the green machine? Yeah. It kind of pivoted in the middle of the back thing, yeah. and you kind of—I didn't yeah. like those guys. No. That was like the one-up. Yeah, yeah. But were they, you a that, big wheel guy? Well, I did, and my brothers had one first, so the front wheel, the front <laughs> wheel oh, has flat. No, no, no tread. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing this, and it's not moving. I'm just spinning. I'm like, what? Why do I get this stuff? It's like those the. Uh, were, it's like they these. were so much fun, but. They were stupid. Remember I showed you this picture of the gloves? Oh, my God. Look, Look at, at the this. hockey gloves. Look at the hockey gloves. Those are my brother's Who? brothers. Is those the things thumb coming through? Thumbs right through. There's not. There's no palm. I'm just holding the wooden stick. Look at those skates. What I'm kind of ice there. is that? Is that ice black? That's the double rinks. Hamilton. <laughs> wow. Double rinks. Yeah, they shut the lights off for a nice uh, ambiance. I love your hair, too. Parted right down the middle. Nice. Fair faucet. Yeah, it's very nice, buddy. Oh, Very David's nice. on. David's on. Hey. Did we say something David. wrong? Oh, no. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh. So far. Thanks for contributing, David. <laughs> Did you have a big wheel as a kid? Like six years ago? Mm, no. <laughs> Are you mm. drinking vodka? No, this is water. <laughs> oh, we recommend vodka. Yeah. Especially in the morning. Get you, get you ready. At 9.30. <laughs> is it 9.30? You're right, but you're on top. These guys on top of it. Yeah, doing good. Well, oh I got man, my, I, got, I got I got my first hockey game on uh, Thursday night. What do you mean first? I thought you were playing hockey. Oh no, you're oh, golf. No. You've been golfing. golfing. So 
you know, my men's league, I've been talking about the, the, my pens league. We run the league right now. Yeah. It's the first game I have played since my shoulder surgery, December of 2019. That's I haven't played hockey since. Really? So, you guys hit? You guys, what, how does no, this work? No, no, it's men's hockey. It's, it's good hockey. It's fun. Um, it's all about the, the change room after the three yeah, cases, three, 11 guys, three cases of beer gone. <laughs> These guys are unbelievable. Like they're asking me to, cause I'm running the beer and, uh, should we bring a fourth case? I don't even like beer that much. No, I drink three. These guys drink seven, eight, ten each <laughs> in an hour. I said, what's wrong with like? It's fun. Believe me, it's fun. <laughs> but I got a guy say, should I bring a fourth case? I said, we got 11 guys. Oh, we need four cases. Oh, we might need it. Okay, bring the fourth case. <laughs> Beats, you got to come. We play at six o'clock on Thursday. I got to come one of these days. One of these days, you got to come watch these characters. They're, they're some of my best friends. And I'm telling you, they are. Great hockey players and even better people, even better oh, people. That's yeah. good. And so we've got a we had a guy last year that I won't say his name, but he'll know who he is. He actually had a heart attack, or the Get year before. The hell out. In shape, plays touch football. This guy, fifty years old, and uh, ah, he's looking a little green in the change room after he's got a white face. I'm like, you okay? Uh, I'm not feeling so good. All of a sudden, he's looking around and said, "You got any aspirin?" So he ate like four aspirins. We called nine one one. What? Yeah. After he's drinking his beer, puts it down. He had a heart attack. In so, the in the in the locker room. In the changing room at Merritt Arena, we had the ambulance there. He's on a gurney. They took him off the gurney. Sorry, he wasn't on the gurney yet. We had three or four of our guys that had a few beers that were laying on the gurney. We took pictures of the guys on the gurney. <laughs> He's in having a heart attack. He's having a heart attack. We got guys laying on the gurney with the, we've got these horns for player of the game and they're sitting there. I got pictures. I got to show you. He's sitting there like this guys are like, yeah, and no one was out there. Cause it was in the, in the hallway. Right. And they're inside the room and these but your buddies having a heart attack and you guys are taking photos on the gurney. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I'm telling you. It's unbelievable. But anyway, so yeah, he's, he's fine now. He's playing his first game. So we, we, we made sure the, the arena's got the uh, the defibrillators ready. Honestly, there's defibrillators there because oh. this is a 50, well, 40 and over league. But they're there. They're there. We got a couple guys. We got a couple cops that could use them. So I might need them this week. My God, I haven't skated in two years. But looking forward to it. Oh, you don't play man. hockey. You're garbage. I'm You're garbage. terrible. I went to hockey school. Hated it. All my buddies play hockey. Never been good at it. Don't like it. Don't practice it. I'm terrible at it. You've seen me skate. It's horrible. Yeah, I know you're awful. It's not good. It's just a license to hurt myself or others. Yeah. Not good. You're a good basketball player. I'm not you bad. Are. I'm a grinder, eh? Yeah, you're grinder. You're like me. Yeah. Not, not a finesse shooter. Or anything. Not a just... finesse, but you get me under the rim. Yeah. I'll, 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 I'll move elbows. you around. Oh, yeah. A couple elbows. of Gordy Howe elbows. Yeah. You know, a good buddy of mine, Sean. You, you've known Sean. Sean B. Uh, What's that? Sean B. Last Sean name B. B. Yeah, uh, no, we're B. not going to say his last name no. only because I got to tell the yeah. story. Yeah. He may yeah. not want yeah. his last name yeah. told. Yeah. But he was he was a good athlete and everything. But he was the one guy on the street that had the pool, right? So we always used to go. He lived on my street. All the boys would go over there, swim in the pool, have a good time. You know, his dad always made us do chores to swim in the pool. It was, it was you know, yeah. he had to clean the pool. He had to clean the cover. You know, he always cut us up watermelon once see the boys. You know, we'd go... Uh, get changed in the shed. And one day he get changed in the shed. You know, as a little kid, you see a grown man get changed. You know, oh boy, that scars you for life. Yeah. That scars you for life. You'll never yeah. be the same. But the one day we're, we're getting ready. We're going to go to um, Guns N' Roses concert. So we're kind of pre, pre drinking at my buddy's house, Sean, we're getting ready to go. And doesn't the concert get canceled? It's supposed to be in Toronto. And this is going back years ago now. And something happened, actual Rose is sick or whatever. So we just continue partying at the pool and we're having a good time. But somehow Sean gets locked out of the house. So we're all outside and he's got to take a dump. Mm. He doesn't know where to go. So what does he do on the front of his yard? Mm. He's running out of time. <laughs> he takes a dump because he's in a hurry. He doesn't know what to do. There's girls coming. He's at a loss. Meanwhile, my house literally is 50 yards down the street. But, you know, it was too far. So didn't think anything of it. Obviously, we laughed because we're idiots. And the next day, I'm walking to school. And uh, I look, and there's Sean's mom. 
and she's out in the front yard. And I'm like, okay, well, what is happening now? And she's in the vicinity of the incident. And she turns to me, she goes, hi, Michael, how are you? I said, hi, hi, Mrs. B, how you doing today? Oh, not so good. Look at this big dog. This big dog took a poo right on the front yard. I can't, what a big dog this must have been. <laughs> Little bit she knows her son. And he's cleaning her son's crap, who's at this point is probably 19 or 20 years old. But yeah. um, this is the kind of idiots that I hung around with on a regular basis. Yeah. And then I joined just a bigger pack when, you know, we started playing in the CFL and then yeah. that list just continues to grow. Yeah. That, that That's good. Hey, speaking about uh, keeping on the theme of, of shit, I live on a corner lot and I can still see it outside. I think I talked to you yesterday. This is what got me thinking of that yeah. story because yesterday you were telling me this. So I live on a corner lot. I got a boulevard, lots of grass, big tree in front. And there is a pile of crap. I wish I could just show it through here. It's honestly, oh, there? I'm not picking it up. It's, it's heavy. Like it's probably a pound. It's a, probably uh Shawnee B's crap that it, this bomb threw over here. It's size of my fist more in a green bag thrown on my boulevard right beside the tree where the dogs pee. I, I'm going to put a, cam- I'm, I'm putting cameras out there. Yeah. I, got a lot, I got a lot of Ivy as well around and a lot of armor stones. And I always, I always find the odd someone to walk by at night and just throw their crap bag into the ivy and it just kind of sinks into the ivy so when i'm in there Gosh. cleaning and stuff bags of shit that's in there and it i'm getting a camera i'm telling you and i'm gonna you gotta stop. catch somebody go oh, i'm mad you I know you do you return the favor yeah you return you just go out at night late at night yeah, it's, oh. it's, pull a sean b oh i'll just i'll grab it and i'll go i'll follow him home and i'll throw it right at their front door oh i'm pissed i'm so mad i'm not picking that thing up it's like a human crap it's huge anyways are you heading to the game saturday I got to see Friday, Friday, sorry, Friday. I got, I got to see it. Uh, I love going to the games. I also love watching at home. You know, there's that, is that combination of, uh, I'm definitely going to watch. There's yeah. the, it, there's the beauty of being there for the, you know, to feel it, the excitement of being there. And there's also the, the, you know, being at home and watching different things and replays and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Uh, I miss a lot when I'm doing the sideline stuff because you're, you're kind of engaged and looking on the body language and listening to the guys on the bench. And when they call you down and you have to talk for, you know, 30, 40 seconds, you know, you gotta be ready, but it's, I got guys offering me beers from the stands. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There you go, Are you on the press, you're on the press box side, no? Or on the other side? I'm right behind the bench. Yeah. 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 The, 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 right directly behind the bench. And I've got about a 10 foot leash. Did they give you a longer cord or no? No, no. It, and the TSN thing runs me over. The cart runs me over every time. Excuse me. He actually hit the TSN guy. Hit Simone. He was getting water. He just oh. came off the bike. He looks so he's he's driving this way. The bench is to the to the other side. And yeah. He's driving this way, looking and hits him. And you know they had the cushions on the side. Yeah, could have blew his leg out, blew something. Really? Also, he was mad. Simone was mad, and the guys like, ah, and the guys like, oh. he's like, you move out of the way. <laughs> oh man, you remember what that was like at Ivor Wind though. Oh, the there's like six inches it. to spare between the wall and the, the whatever the Zamboni, the cart, and yeah. whatever. Well, the, the fans that were on the 50 yard line that spent, you know, 100 bucks a ticket and that, that thing standing right in their way, they couldn't see anything. I used to hit guys into that. You, you went into that oh, yeah. a bunch of times. Oh, you my God. Yeah. I've gone into the dugout. Remember, because yeah. the dugout would just disappear. You'd hit a guy, he'd slide off the, you know, the yeah. four feet of turf right to the dugout. I hit Reggie Slack. Oh, I, I hit him and he was about 220, 230. He's he was a big, big man. He was big. I'll never forget. He flies out, takes off up uh, the sideline and I had a beeline on him and he was, didn't step out of bounds and he tried to turn in and I was running full tilt and just laid him out. I, he flew into the dugout and hit uh, the old coach uh, to Saskatchewan. Uh, oh, I know God. what you mean. Legend, legend, legend coach. Anyways, I'll, I'll get his name. Hit him. He flipped into the dugout, broke his arm. Cal Murphy. Cal Murphy. Yes, 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 yes. Cal Murphy. I remember this incident. So he hit, I hit him so hard. His feet went up in the air and he, Cal was just coming out of the dugout talking to the guys and it hit Cal. And he flipped into the dugout, broke his arm. He had to leave the game. Carl Coulter was on that team. Yes. He went, yes, your dad, your dad. He's yelling at me. I'm like, <laughs> and I was right at their bench. I had guys on me. Um, no, of course, none of my teammates were around, but yeah, that was fun. 
Hey, don't you know, don't forget, looking. there was no pads on those walls for a decade. No, no, never. Nothing. You know, I just saw the other day. I'm just looking at it now. My first guess, guess who my first interception was from? Who? Take a guess. Andy. It was in 95. No, and we played Ottawa. If you can remember, it was an Ottawa Rough Rider. I'll give you mm-hmm. a, I'll give you a, a hint. D A, not Damon oh. Allen. No, not Damon. No, you're, you're, this is a blast from the past. You're gonna did know. he go on? Did he play in Sacramento? Yep. Yes. Oh, what the heck is his name? Um, David from Archer. the NFL. David What's Archer. That? David, David Archer. Archer. Yes. Yeah. I got the ball. First pick, 19. Oh, actually, it was a 96. I didn't get a pick in 95. <laughs> oh, man. My first, my first touchdown came. Believe it or not, I didn't I got I, in preseason when I started in Toronto? I think I got a couple touchdowns, but I never played two years there. Didn't get a lot of touchdowns because I was kind of more of a backup. When I came to Hamilton, my first touchdown was at the Big O against Montreal, and it was the same game. I'm almost positive that the night before, Lee Knight told us it was his birthday, mm-hmm. so we went out on Crescent Street. You know, we went to <laughs> we had a little had a couple beers, and we stayed out a, a lot later than probably we should have. Yeah. Had this great party. We were dying the next day. And of course, you know, Lee was the veteran. I was just looking up. I would have done anything. Lee would have said, jump off that building. I was, yeah, okay, whatever it takes to play like an idiot. And we're just sitting in the huddle. It's late in the game. The game's tight. And we're, we look over at Lee and I'm dying. I'm just, I'm sweating booze and whatever else. I'm exhausted. I look over at Lee and Lee's got a smile on his face. I said, how are you, how are you doing this? Lee? He's like, ah, you know, I don't know. I said, it was your birthday. Happy birthday, brother. And he goes, listen, I got, I got to tell you something. It was like uh, September or whatever it was. Cause my birthday is not till November. I'm like, you son of a bitch. We were out all night. How stu- I come to think of these stories. I tell how stupid am I that I fall for every single one of these. Yeah. yeah that, I, I, I got bottom, friends. Bottom drinks too. Bottom drinks. Yeah. yeah. Friends treat me like a- animals, like enemies. Yeah. And then I go, I, I've made bad decisions in my life, but you know, this podcast is probably one of them too, but we'll figure that out as we continue to go along. David, anything to add? Uh, <laughs> no. We're good. Uh, what a, well, listen, having you on board, David, and just the, the way you contribute it to this podcast is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> you what are you drinking up? now? This is coffee. I got coffee and water. I got to have them oh. both at the same time. Oh, boy. Nice. Balance. Balance yeah. in life. Okay, so let's start thinking, Hitch. We need, who would we choose for, like, Hamilton celebrities? You know, legends. People that, you know, have been around the block, that know this city, that want to talk to us about uh, whatever. To come on a show? Yeah. Oh, you said Martin Short. Let's get let's him Let's get Marty. He would come Let's on. Get, he, know, he knows us. He knows us. Let's get Marty. How about Bob Young? No, Do you think Bob can hang? No, maybe for 10 minutes. Do you think minutes. Bob can hang? Let, I, we'll put the challenge out to Bob. We'd be surprised. Uh, he, he was at my roast. And oh, I, yeah. I kept I kept looking in the corner when Whitey and Philbert, well, especially when Philbert was talking. And I looked over a few times and he's just like kind of sitting there like, okay, this, we knew this was going to be bad. Oh, he did. He loved it. I think he loved it. That was like the last major event a eh, before all this yeah. everything went to hell because that would have been what october or something of uh 2019 yeah. november yeah i think we got to put our, our minds together and really think about for next week like if gregor can't do it we yeah. need to have a special guest i agree is you greg think? is greg listen to what we do here has he even said hey listen to you well, idiots i think so but i don't think he knows how to put it onto his phones actually to tell you the truth he's like me with computers if not, we're going to get, why don't we ask? Osh won't do it during the week, eh? No, oh, this not. guy. Listen, at nine, this nine guy. o'clock. If we do it at nine, it's what, seven there? It's an hour? We can hour. ask him, but he's scared. I think he's scared. Yeah, you know what? He yeah, you, During the season, he won't because he thinks, he thinks we'll ask him something stupid. and He's, he's sensitive. Him. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Okay. And we have, we've, just, we, we've said a lot about him, too, so. We have, but that just goes to show you this son of a bitch. He's, he's everywhere. 
Yeah. You can never trust that guy. He's everywhere. We should get He's Kyle danger. Walters. We should get Kyle Walters, which is his boss. We should Stick. get Kyle to do something to him for us. Oh, yeah. Like put something in his locker. Some, like a, a I don't know if he's even tuna, any of these. Yeah, old tuna sandwich in his locker. Or something. Yeah, yeah. Put we need to set something up. We should. We need to set something up for sure. Okay. Well, well, listen, it's going to take us a while to set that up. We don't know who our guest is going to be. We've been talking about guests for eight weeks now. We've had one, so that's not yeah. bad. It's like 15%, 12.5%. We've got two, David. Oh, yeah, David. He's a guest. Look He's at a this guest. guy. He's the, you got a I ponytail, David? Is that a ponytail? Yeah, yeah. A man bun. Right? Man bun. Nice, buddy. I like it. Oh, You're thanks. always in flannel, too. You always look so comfortable. Yeah, yeah. got to be comfortable. He's wearing What's his that behind you? What's that red box? What's that red box oh, behind you? That's a like a Coca Cola cooler. Oh wow! Yeah. What, it works, but what it's really loud. In there? It's really loud. It like chugs now if you turn it on. So I don't, <laughs> I don't turn it on. <laughs> oh, I love it. We're ending on that, David. We're you ending know, on that. We're ending on that. that. That's our theme music. <laughs> yeah, that's our theme music. No, 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 no. That's it. You've heard it. That's the end of episode eight on the More Yelly and Hitch podcast right here on the Tie Cats Audio Network. See you, boys. More Yelly and Hitch, dropping every Wednesday. Subscribe, like, laugh.